spend too much time dwelling on on what exactly is going on with the business right now because the market is really concerned with what happens uh, with the uh, with the Uniper takeover. Um, I understand that you've now submitted regulatory approval um, requests to BaFin, the German regulator. Can you give us a sense of when you expect to uh, maybe get some sort of feedback on that? Uh, we expect to uh, launch the offer immediately after BaFin has uh, approved of uh, our offer documentation. So we are we are in practice. We are talking early early November. Early November. Okay. Have you actually spoken? To Klaus Schaefer, I, he is the CEO of this business. Um, kind of, what kind of conversations are going on around what you hope to achieve? Uh, look, we have been saying all the time that we are open to to having a constructive dialogue with uh, Mr. Schaefer and his uh, team. Obviously, the only agreement we have is uh, with Eon uh, on their 47 percent stake uh, in the company. And uh, when you go over 30 percent, you are by law obliged to make a tender offer to all shareholders and uh, we would very much like to do this through a constructive dialogue with uh, Mr. Schaefer but uh, he has told us that uh, he is not ready for a dialogue before he has seen uh, our uh, over documentation and, and uh, we obviously respect that. Right so as soon as that goes through you're going to pick up the phone and you're going to start talking to him yeah? We are ready to talk at any time and, and that's what we have kept saying saying all the, all the time. Um, in terms of, of how this is going to get structured, are you going to pick up all of the assets? Is that your plan? Are you going to try and dispose of some of the assets? Are you having conversations with anybody else about some of these assets at this stage? Hey, look, we are just focusing on the on the Eon stake of 47 uh, percent, and and we have no plans whatsoever for any asset disposals. We are are not in discussions with any third parties about uh, any of the uh, assets. Uh, so we are just focusing on the Eon stake and, and now we are obviously launching the tender over to uh, all shareholders. We are looking at this as an investment, not as a restructuring case. Right, okay. And do you, do, would you expect any regulatory pushback on that? We need uh, regulatory approval at least uh, in the European Union, in Russia. Uh, and in the United States. We have already received approval in the United States. Uh, we have filed uh, in uh, Russia and uh, we are, are now in the process of preparing uh, the filing uh, in Brussels uh, uh, as uh, well. And uh, of course, this is something that one should not uh, uh, preempt. We need to let the authorities uh, do their work. Do you think the Russian regulators could be a problem? Uh, we have filed and we are in close cooperation with them um, right now. Uh, Russia is a very large country with an extremely large, uh, large market, uh, market overall. So we are looking forward to a constructive dialogue. Uh, dialogue. The combined market shares of these two companies uh, actually in Russia will, will not be, not be that, uh, that high. But uh, this is something that we will discuss with the, with the authorities. You're pretty confident that coal and this kind of energy process has a future, yeah? This isn't... I, we're not going to have a problem. If I'm a shareholder, you, you, you've got my back here. That, that there isn't going to be a problem with emission standards, coal going forward. I, you're confident that this is not going to be the case. We have seen other companies being forced to make big write downs after acquisitions. Uh, we are not basing uh, this uh, uh, investment case on the, uh, on the assumption that, uh, that coal would uh, need to be run as uh, long as uh, possible. Most European countries will be publishing uh, from the political side time schedules for how, as to how quickly they will want to phase out coal, and we are obviously going to be fully committed to whatever those time schedules are. What I want to point out, though, is that 70% uh, of uh, Uniper's 38 gigawatt production portfolio, which is a very large portfolio, is something else than uh, coal. Uh, they have almost as much CO2-free hydro production as uh, Fortum has today. So, so we see this uh, portfolio being extremely competitive in many different uh, scenarios depending on how the European energy policy will go.